Hello and welcome to another update video about Cardano and Bitcoin. In this video, we're going to take a look at both charts and I want to go into a little bit more detail about where we are currently on the Bitcoin chart. A little bit more detail here, the daily chart starting actually um, here in 2021. Really want to show you that in my view, and this is really my, my updated view after we broke down between 53K, um, I told you that I'm going to well, believe that we are in the bearish scenario. For me, this is not bullish anymore. A lot of people still talking about um, that we are bullish, that it's looking good, how bullish it is. I don't believe that anymore. Not short term. I think short term, this is now clearly bearish. I think we're currently finishing a correction to the downside and it is a large correction. My assumption is, and I could be wrong, you know, and I'm happy to be proven wrong, but this is for me speaking only one language now, Any, you know, after we broke below 53k um, so for me the view is that back actually the high that we had in April was a wave 5 top yeah which is basically according to the Elliott wave you're basically finishing your your wave count there so a wave 5 is a top after which you would have an ABC correction now that wave 5 here was also a larger wave 1 okay so this larger wave 1 here um means that we are currently in a wave two correction yeah very clearly now what we need to say is that um this looked absolutely difficult right? you know you couldn't really it, it couldn't look more difficult and it couldn't be more difficult to identify because um what we have here is in my view after the high in april where we had 65k we had a wave a correction um, or yeah, basically an ABC correction within a wave A, we moved down all the way to 30K. So you can see how massive that correction was. So you move down in a wave A, which consists of a one, two, three, four, five pattern. Then you came up in a wave B, which is consisting of A, B, and C. So there you go, A, B, C um, to the upside because a, part, a wave B, a larger wave B always consists of an A, B, C. So we did that. And the difficulty to detect this was because it did overshoot that wave one or wave five on a different time scale. So this is absolutely possible and valid as per the Elliott wave method. You get overshooting waves B. This is, you know, in, in other words, people talk about it like an ascending wedge. You know, this is a different, can, can look very different um, or very similar. I mean, an ascending wedge also gives you slightly higher highs, but actually you're struggling to make new highs. And therefore, um, it is actually a bearish pattern. Didn't really look if this is actually an ascending wedge, but this is basically the same logic behind it in an ascending wedge where the buyers are struggling to make higher highs. You typically get the same sort of thing. You are then breaking to the downside. And this is what we had, an A and a B, an overshooting wave B. Um, this could have been bullish. Um, then we would have had to apply a different wave count and I did that until we broke below 53k. Um, basically this would have been a wave 4, a wave 3, uh, no sorry, a wave 3 here to the upside, a wave 4 correction and then a wave 5 would now have followed that would have taken us to above 70, 75k. But because in the wave 4 we have now come far down to, you know, too low basically, this could not, this cannot be a wave 4 anymore. So it is, in my view, the alternative scenario as we broke below 53K, an A, B and a C correction, like a massive one. So this means that actually since April, we are in a massive correction, okay? So this might be different to what many people are telling you, but this is my clear understanding now, as we have not managed to push higher here in that wave B, we couldn't push higher. We maximized what is possible in an overshooting wave B perfectly. So it perfectly adhered to certain um, FIB levels here. And we are now breaking down, in my view, very, very clearly and very impulsively to that wave C down there, which is also a wave two, yeah? You've got this one, two, after, that, after this, we are going to see a large wave three to the upside. And um, we have to come down now and to finish that correction. So basically, we have been faked out, right? So since April, we are in this ABC correction. Everybody thought we we're going to see new all-time highs here. And I did think the same until we broke below 53K. Many people still bullish. I'm not anymore. Uh, you know, this was all a bearish move. And this is just, this is basically um, a correction, a correction, a large correction. And it's actually great because this looks like that this massive correction, we are going to finish this fairly soon. If you look at the whole time frame here, 
um, from April, maybe till February this will take or January, then we would have um, finished this massive correction within maybe nine months, you know, which is not too bad. It's a massive one, A, B and C coming down clearly into the C. And the logic behind it is that we have to drop below 30K because the wave A was a 30K level, even slightly below that. So you have to come lower. I did give you the target levels here in this yellow box. We can actually come down all the way to 20K. Um, we can actually, as per the Elliott wave, we can come down a little bit lower, but I don't think we're going to do that because Bitcoin has never dropped below, in a bear market, never dropped below the um, the high from the previous bull market. So I think 20K will be the magical minimum. Um, this is my target box in, in all scenarios. There is no bullish scenario for me here anymore. The bullish scenario will be that we now come and finish the correction finally. To be honest, the faster, the better. Um, and I did show you before that in my view, we could we could come up here once more into this yellow range um, in a, basically if we, um, if we here take the retracements from the top of that wave to the, the, to the low here. So it's a bit slow today, my laptop here. Then you can see that this yellow target box is lying directly between two key FIB levels here, which is the 0.5 and the 0.786. So basically between 55.7K and 63.5K. This is what this is currently um, showing me. We can also push higher, um, but overall, this is what I can see in the charts. This is a possibility that we come once more into that range here, maybe even um, a little bit higher, but this is the ideal target range if we if we have another push to the upside, this would be the ideal target range before we then come back down. But it is also possible, and I would personally prefer that, that we've already, with what you can see here, maybe this small um, bear flag, and let me just go into the four hour chart, that with this small bear flag here and this small recovery down from 41 and a half all the way up to nearly 50K, that we've already seen this, um, yeah, consolidation and um, this small recovery and that this is it for the moment at that from here we already straight away go down. So we could take the, that route going up a little bit before we go down or from here directly go down possibly to the next support levels, which I think the main one will be here. Um, there's three key support levels. So the first one is 45K. The next one is 39 and a half. And then a very important one is also 37 and a half. So it could be that from here we now drop in basically a bear flag, drop down further into these ranges. And if we take the, um, let's just take the length of the flagpole, not the wick, but just the length of the flagpole that could take us directly to that 37 and a half level. Yeah, um, very roughly, but overall, before we then um, consolidate once more, before we then drop into the target range, okay? Now, this would be my preferred scenario because the faster this happens, the sooner the correction will be over and the sooner we can continue uh, wave three to the upside, which will be, be the largest wave, which can give us a chance to push to the 100K possibly fairly soon. And that whole view here is actually quite bullish and it would indicate that we've actually seen um, probably not the worst yet, but that we've actually, that we're currently in the end of that correction and that we're going to see this playing out hopefully fairly soon. It will take longer if we have to go all the way up here to 60K again before we drop. That will take much, much longer, but ideally we drop down immediately and um, yeah, maybe have a bit of a consolidation there at 37 and a half or so, and then come into that target range. That is now my primary, primary um, scenario. The alternative is or actually they are both very valid and both like, I would say 50, 50, um, maybe even a little bit more probability that we drop straight away before we come up because we haven't really seen a strong reversal here to the upside yet. Um, it's pretty much hovering at one level. So I would expect us a little bit more actually to drop straight away, but the, that, that we come up here once more and do go to new all time highs straight away. I don't think is possible anymore. We need to come down lower. We need to come into this target range now and, um, this will push a lot of the altcoins much lower as well. So this would be quite a bit of a drop. Yeah, we don't need to um, 
you know, no need to dream here, but this would take us down like 50% from now. Yeah. Um, maybe even more if we drop to 20 K 50, 60% um, possible from, from now fairly soon, hopefully, because if this, you know, this could, because all the questions always come up, you know, how long can that take? If we do that now, if we don't go the long route through this yellow target box up there, but go straight away down there, this could happen hopefully until the end of January, I would hope. Um, you know, I don't think it will be much faster, but at least then we could within a couple of months complete all of that before we then hopefully have a great two, 2022. And that scenario, I don't know if you realize, but that scenario, scenario will assume that we are not going to have a traditional um, long bear market um, next year, which everybody assumed. But of course, if everybody assumes it, it doesn't happen. And this is now crystallizing more and more in my view that we are going to see a very extended bull market or even assume that actually the bull market hasn't even started yet um, because we have been since April in a massive correction um, looking from an Elliott wave point of view. Okay. So this is, I think a very interesting perspective and gives me a lot of hope that as soon as we've hit this yellow target level, we're going to go up from here. That's my latest view as this bullish scenario above 53 K hasn't played out. And remember, I did tell you that that 53 K is like a magical line. If we drop below that, we are going to enter a bearish, um, scenario. And this is short term bearish, um, probably a couple of months correction before we then come up once more. Now, ADA, unfortunately, um, has started much earlier with the correction. It has started much, much earlier, it has started already in September with the correction. Um, now we are currently still as per this scenario, ADA is in a wave three. Yeah, we, we are in this green wave three currently, but within that green wave three, we are in a smaller time frame wave two. So we are in a correction that is pushing down really, really to the maximum it can do. The absolute maximum would be down to a dollar. Um, from here, that's around 30% um, reduction. You know, we are now at around 135. So if we say we drop all the way down to that level, that's 25% to a dollar, that would be um, possible within a bullish scenario. If we drop below that, you know, the question is, will we really push below that? Um, to be honest, I am not 100% sure anymore. Um, well, I'm not 100% sure anyway, because I'm actually quite, quite bullish on Cardano still. But we need to understand that if Bitcoin drops much more, then Cardano will suffer as well quite a lot. And um, the, the only thing is that the difference between Bitcoin and Cardano is that on Cardano's side, because Cardano did actually start, you know, a couple of months earlier with a correction that Bitcoin um, Bitcoin is just much later with a correction. Okay. So also here in August, while Cardano was just pumping, what did Bitcoin actually do in August? Bitcoin in August, we look at that. I mean, it moved up, but how much? Let's just take a look here. Da -da -da. We need to see here from, let's just take the beginning of August till the end of August. What did Bitcoin do? 35 yeah, here, 35%. So what did ADA do in the same time period in August till the end of August? There you go. That was rough. Yeah, a little bit more, wasn't it? There was like 150%. So you can see that Cardano can outperform Bitcoin. It can do that massively. It can also run um, against Bitcoin sort of. Yeah. And it has done that before. So there is a possibility that Cardano could turn around while Bitcoin is really smashing down. That would be a possibility. I think it's likely though that it will drop together with Bitcoin, but because the, the indicators are already at a, you know, absolutely low. I mean, look at this here, ADA USD on the daily, the RSI is really at a minimum. We are in the oversold range or just about at the oversold range, whereas Bitcoin isn't there yet. Here, if we take a look at Bitcoin, on the daily, you can see that where Bitcoin is, um, it is just in a much, much different level. I mean, it's also low, but then if we go to the weekly, there you go. We are still quite in the middle here on the Bitcoin chart on the weekly. Whereas if we take ADA, you can see that we are lower. We are sort of in the pretty much um, here at, at the sort of the 38 level on the weekly. So the indicators are just much lower. Also here on the MACD, 
um, on the weekly, look at where the MACD for ADA is on the weekly and take a look at where the MACD is for Bitcoin on the weekly. It's only just um, entering here the red territory and it's only just had a bearish crossover up here. Whereas um, for ADA on the weekly, it's already at the zero line. You can see that here, the MACD line is already at the zero line. So at the ADA, um, the ADA correction just started much lower. And the question is how much lower can it actually fall? So is this um, because we started so much earlier? Does this actually mean it can't fall much lower? Maybe we, it will be enough hopefully to support us at 125, even though I don't think it will necessarily support us at 125. I think we will find support here at a dollar, but there is a small chance that we actually drop below a dollar. And then this is just, um, yeah, what, what will happen? Then I need to look at the, um, the chart then. But overall, if it drops below a dollar, we, we can, I think, expect um, dropping prices from there. But I think it is very unlikely that we drop actually below a dollar because the dollar line is a very, very key support level for ADA. And um, yeah, as I said, we started pretty much two months before Bitcoin with the correction. I don't really, you know, nobody has a crystal ball, but it has held the whole year that one dollar line. And um, we, um, yeah, I, I just think we are we are going to support this. And if not, if not, then it will drop lower. But even then, when Bitcoin is coming up, then ADA should follow that. But overall, um, ADA has just started much earlier, as I said, and Bitcoin is only just starting that correction here. Um, well, actually, Bitcoin has been in a major correction, but this correction just looked completely different um, to ADA's correction. Um, so much, much more, much, much more overshooting here that B wave for Bitcoin, which ADA didn't have. So Bitcoin drops from a much, much higher level. You know, when Bitcoin had the wave B up here, ADA looked completely different. It's also a different wave count. Um, so yeah, we are pretty much already at a key support level here for ADA. I mean, the $1 level before for ADA was 30K for Bitcoin. Now we are nearly here at the, um, we are, you know, we, we can drop around 25% to get to the dollar level with ADA and Bitcoin can drop pretty much, what does that say? 50, 60%. So Bitcoin can drop much more to get to the same level, will fall much harder. So hopefully ADA will find support where it did find support before. And um, I hope that gives you a little bit, well, gives you a bit, little bit of hope. That is my primary scenario that I think we are going to, um, the, the faster that correction is over for Bitcoin, the faster we're going to back in a, in a bull market. And um, I think there's actually good news that we now know, in my view, we now know that we are in this C correction and it will drop hard. It will crash hard. It will totally smash Bitcoin um, as it did back here, back in April and May. But this time, hopefully it will be fast and we don't have to go the long way around this yellow target box to drop then. Hopefully we drop straight away and this will hopefully then lead to a massively oversold um, level on the Bitcoin chart and hopefully also will lead to a return in this yellow target box. That's primarily what I expect now. Um, you know, I'll stick now with my bearish scenario. There's no up or down anymore. This is pretty much where I think we are going to head and I have to implement that now into all my altcoin scenarios. But there are some altcoins that are looking much more bullish then, um, for example, Bitcoin at the moment, and I'm going to mention that when I do the analysis. So let's see if that is going to play out now. Um, hope you enjoyed that video a bit longer than usual. Um, if you did, please smash the like button and subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.